It is May 11th, 2023, and you're watching The Code Report. We have no moat, and open source models will win the great AI war. That's according to a leaked memo from a Google employee. Based on the announcements at Google I.O. yesterday, I think they got the memo. We've been applying AI to make AI. AI first, generative AI. Third, AI. Deploying AI. Finally, rigorously tested AI with AI. Large language models with AI. Power of AI, generative AI, AI platform, AI. Tailwind. AI first, AI model. The moon landing. Is AI generated to generative AI, powered by generative AI, with AI at the center. Leading edge AI research with Google's AI in the cloud, personal AI. Building AI, building, sorry. It's no surprise to see Google going all in on AI in order to protect their core search advertising business from OpenAI and Bing Chat. But they also announced some amazing things for web and mobile developers. And in today's video, we'll look at 10 crazy announcements from Google I.O. One, generative AI is coming directly to search engine result pages. And that means internet users will have less of a reason to visit your website to look for answers. And that'll completely change the way people think about search engine optimization in the future. And it makes me wonder how advertisements will be integrated into these results. Two, speaking of advertisements, one thing they didn't tell you at I.O. is that they're currently running a YouTube ad blocker experiment that will prevent you from using YouTube if you have ad blockers enabled. In other words, it's an ad blocker blocker, but I've said too much already. Three, the biggest AI announcement at I.O. was the release of Palm 2, Google's state-of-the-art model to compete with GPT-4. It comes in a variety of sizes, like gecko, otter, bison, and unicorn, that trade off speed for sophistication. What's more exciting, though, is that you have access to these foundational models from Google Cloud's ML Ops product, Vertex AI. You can use Vertex to fine-tune your own models with your own data, and that's huge for entrepreneurs who want to build their own AI products. It also has an embeddings API and all kinds of other useful stuff. Four, we've got Duet, which is bringing AI to all of Google's business products like Docs and Sheets. It's the answer to Microsoft's Copilot. I've been using it in Google Docs myself, and it's a total game-changer for white-collar productivity. It's not quite as good as GPT-4, but currently it's only using the Bison model. I guess we'll see what happens when they unleash the unicorn. In addition, these models can write code, and they're being integrated directly into IDEs like Android Studio. They demoed StudioBot, which can write and analyze code, but most importantly, debug crashes. That's cool, but not quite as cool as number five, Project Tailwind, which is Tailwind CSS built natively into the Chrome browser. Actually, no, that, that's not right. I wish, but it's actually just another AI product. You can think of it as Google Drive, where you store a bunch of documents that are automatically trained as your own custom AI model. That'll be incredibly useful for cheating on your homework, or if you're too broke to hire a lawyer, you could use it to analyze all the legal documents in your case. Tools like that will be huge in the future, but now it's time to move out of the AI realm. Six, Google announced a foldable phone. It'll cost you about two racks, and now Apple is the only company that doesn't have a foldable. Seven, Firebase updates. Hosting now supports a bunch of new frameworks like SvelteKit, Nuxt, Astro, and Flutter Web. Firestore now supports OR queries, Cloud Functions got a Python runtime, and they released a bunch of new extensions to access AI tools like the Palm API. Check out my second channel for a full tutorial on all this stuff soon. Eight, Flutter announced a new version that has full support for the new Material 3 design spec. That's good news for mobile developers, but number nine is even better. WebAssembly for managed memory languages. Garbage collected languages like Dart and Kotlin will be able to compile to WebAssembly, which means they can run natively in the browser. Tools like Flutter can already transpile to JavaScript, but WebAssembly is up to three times faster. They actually demoed a React developer's worst nightmare, a Flutter app running inside of an Angular app and sharing state between the two. And finally, that brings us to number 10, WebGPU, a new API that allows the browser to access the GPU. This API has been in the works for a while, but can now be enabled in Chrome with a feature flag. It's basically a replacement for WebGL that will make it easier and faster to run 3D graphics and do machine learning directly in the browser. It'll improve libraries like 3JS and can already make TensorFlow.js run 100 times faster. And that's it for our show tonight. Tune in tomorrow for more AI lore. Now here it is, your moment of zen. We're so excited to make the moon landing with AI first. Generative AI with AI. Thank you.